Anatomist, we're going to draw the celiac trunk. I saved scrap paper from the printer. There's something uh, looks like this is Marta. I don't know where this came from. Anyway, we're going to draw the stomach. And over here, the liver. Now we're going to draw the artery we're talking about today. All this is so we can talk about the celiac trunk. So here's the aorta, and here's this trunk coming off that has three branches. So the first branch, uh, the easiest one, we'll mention first, it goes to the spleen. We'll just draw a spleen here. There's your spleen. And um, there is a branch off of the spleen, I guess I'll go ahead and mention it now, that takes care of, here's your stomach. So here's your lesser curve and your greater curvature of the stomach. So the arteries on the greater curvature of the stomach are called gastroamental. This is on the patient's left side. So we're gonna say L, G, O, for left gastroamental. You're gonna hear the old people, like your teachers, often say gastroepiploic because that's just what it was called when we were in school. So we don't mean to do that, but sometimes that's just how it comes out. So then your other branch coming over to the stomach comes to the lesser curvature of the stomach. Thus, we call it a gastric artery. So any artery on the lesser curvature is called gastric. This is going to be the left gastric, L, G. Got it? So those are the kind of easy ones. Boom, boom, boom. This is the hepatic artery, it's more difficult. So when it comes off the celiac trunk, it's first called the common hepatic. <clears throat> and we come along, it's got this branch here called the gastroduodenal. But it continues along now as the proper hepatic. <clears throat> it's gonna work its way on up here to the liver, where we're gonna have a left and right hepatic artery. But that's not all. Commit now. Start drawing and we'll throw in a gallbladder for free. I even have a green magic marker for the gallbladder. There you go. So the gallbladder is supplied by the cystic artery, which is often a branch of the right hepatic. Often. So you might find that yours is coming off of the proper or maybe off the left. And we're going to find a lot of that where it doesn't always agree with what uh, Frank Netter told us it's going to be. But usually it's off the right hepatic. All right, so there we go. Now there's another one here I want to mention. Come on here, the lesser curvature of the stomach. This is going to be your right gastric. There you go. All right. So, so far, we've got, we should know our three major branches off the celiac trunk. We've got our splenic, our splenic, our left gastric, and our common hepatic. The splenic gives off the gastroamental, the left gastroamental. This gastroduodenal is coming down here, and it gives off the right gastroamental. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other branch there, it's a top name, but it makes sense. It's just long, okay? Organs over here include the duodenum and the pancreas. So this is going to be the, pancrea the superior pancreaticoduodenal. Super superior pancreatico duodenal. I'm spelling impaired, but this one is phonetic, so it works works well. Superior pancreatic duodenal. Here it is. That's your superior pancreatic duodenal. But that's not enough because this splits into a posterior and an anterior branch. And I'm not going to write that again, but you're going to say posterior superior pancreatic duodenal and anterior superior
superior pancreatic or duodenal. There is some good exercise of our new anatomical language, all right? And uh, they're going to go on the opposite sides of the duodenum. So there you have it. There you have your branches of the celiac trunk. Now, that, was, that seemed like a lot, but it's not so much. If you drew this yourself, and you start with just getting these three branches, start with the easy ones after that, you're going to get it down pretty fast. You can, do, you can tame this in 10 minutes, I bet, just doing this simple drawing and uh, speaking it out loud. All right, best wishes.